who cares about this? What is it with Netflix releasing these bad Korean productions on autopilot? Okay, rhetoric question. It's because they're low creativity, medium budget, and they still have mass appeal to Korea boo Western audiences who think they're smart for watching something with subtitles on. This show is so cliche and so terrible, and I recommend you skip it. So let's talk about it. Let's start with the positives, like I usually do when I have a negative review. The father character. Not a sad backstory attached to him for the main character, but him showing up as a spy was the only original and non cliche thing to happen here. And I do like that he does care for his estranged son and his grandchildren that he never knew. Sure, he's probably a bad father and would have also made for a bad grandfather, but he's not obnoxious. Like, in this context, he's kind of likable. That were the positives. There, one compliment. Now, time to rag. Let's start with how unoriginal the series is. Almost everything that happens is a painfully overused cliche. It's fine to use some cliches, all shows do, but when you have 10 episodes of almost entirely cliche plot points and shots with barely anything semi-original, that's very bad. And speaking of bad, the setup to the series reminds me a lot of Breaking Bad. Our main character works as a teacher, there's an illness in the family, he gets into the drug circuit. At first I even thought it was an adaptation or remake. And another case of unoriginality that I want to point out specifically is the last scene. So spoiler alert, you can skip to the timestamp on screen. But the last scene is basically Squid Game's last scene. And it drags out way too long to show us exactly what we know is going to happen. Yes, he's going to get the call. Yes, he's going to be threatened. And apparently people are watching him. He shouldn't go to the police. Even if I hadn't seen Squid Game, I knew what was going to happen. And it didn't excite me. Nothing exciting in this entire show happens. Everything is so straightforward and kind of predictable. Which would usually make for... A bad show in an unremarkable way but there's something really bad about this series the main character is horrible look i see why he would take the money and get himself into trouble because his son is ill he can really use it and take that risk but everything he does after this is just dumb following these gangsters without even knowing if they'll let him quit after a while yeah they say he can pay off his debts they don't mention if they'll let him off the hook after he made that amount of money or if they'll kill him or something and he does nothing to try to get himself out of this situation he's just standing there with his his stunned face, not adapting to the situation he's in, not trying to find a way out or reach the police without the gangsters knowing. He's really doing nothing. I guess that the curators think that just because the main character doesn't have ill intent makes him likable by default. No, this guy has no traits I can praise him for. Any attempt at making me feel bad for him, like those birthday flashbacks, are just painful to watch as well. Partially because they're generic and too straightforward, like the kid saying, oh I love you daddy, is just far too straightforward. But also because I really do not have anything to root for with this character. Am I supposed to root for this guy because his wife wants to divorce him or because he's getting threatened when he really isn't even trying to improve any of these situations to begin with except complaining about it. Now I want to talk about some tendencies of the show that are not really part of the story itself but of the presentation of the series. The show constantly uses flashbacks to earlier scenes, often from the same episode. Seriously, at the end they will literally flashback to a scene earlier in the same episode when they're only 9 minutes into the episode and they do this constantly. That they really have so little story to film that they want to repeat footage then maybe just make the episode shorter a flashback to earlier in the show when you're eight episodes in is fine that can work to recontextualize the scene for example but the flashbacks here are just the characters reminding what has been said to them a few minutes earlier and it happens way too often the issue of too early reincorporation isn't even reserved to the flashbacks in episode two the opening shows the main character's wife getting filmed on the phone by an unseen man this opening is clearly there to be recontextualized later on in the episode which usually makes for a really interesting review at the end of an episode where we find out what this video means for the plot and go to see the episode work towards this review. However, almost immediately after the title card we see our main character find a video on a certain phone. There's no build up, no mystery and no reason to show this scene twice in a row. So they just wasted a very interesting opening. The music choice is also not my cup of tea. Two songs are constantly repeated at the beginning and end of the episode. While neither of them are bad songs necessarily, they don't seem to fit the series. Both are very calm songs that often don't fit the scenes they're played over, and both are in the English language in a Korean series. They feel entirely detached from the show, as if the writers just wanted to insert their favorite songs into it. Trying to give it the benefit of the doubt, the full lyrics can kind of relate to the main character situation. Kind of. One song, Wellerman, is a sea ballad from the 1800s about whaling ships from Otago in New Zealand. The workers sing about how they're almost done, but things don't go as planned and it takes longer. The determined captain forces everyone to continue to work. Is this a metaphor for how the main character doesn't know how long the gangsters force him to work for them? 
Also, the workers on these ships did not receive wages, but direct goods for their labor. Like, just like how the main character doesn't get paid because he has to pay off his own debt. I guess this is really me stretching to be generous to this musical choice, but the song still doesn't fit the show to me. The other song, Grassland, is probably original to the show. I couldn't find the song by typing in the lyrics and only found the name from the credits. It's about going down a broken road as in a bad path and longing for the past. Yeah, our main character does that, but it's a very abstract song and it could fit in so many TV series and it doesn't feel like it is a good fit. It doesn't feel like they actually wrote it specifically for this show, but they probably did. And even if you think these songs are amazing, it doesn't matter that they're both in English. I don't like how often they're used. These are literally just two songs with lyrics throughout the entire show. Crossland is played six times and Wellerman eight times. And it's a 10 episode show. I find that repetitive. The series tries to create a theme or a motive in the concept of family. The problem with this is how poorly it's executed. It is only there because the characters mention it explicitly multiple times. There's no subtext to be found anywhere, none of the other scenes seem to tap into this theme or show how the characters consider each other family. And the fact that they use so many subplots is kind of telling as to how shallow the main plot is. The gangster that our main character had to work for is not nearly as interesting as the writer think he is. Neither is there anything that puts him above the other criminals, as the end of this series tries to imply. I liked Officer Yo Jun for most of the show and thought he could have made a better protagonist than our main character, but as he becomes irrational at the end. She has audio evidence of the person who is the mole talking to the mobsters and ratting out their undercover colleague to get that one killed. I get that she's angry and that she wants revenge for her colleagues that died due to this entire fiasco. But up until this point she seems to be really rational in her behavior and be able to control her emotions, at least keep them to herself, to the private sphere. I get this is to set up the second season where she has to work with the main character because Moni Ice did it as well. But I'm not interested in the second season. Because this is all the show is, a rip off of better shows. Thanks for watching.